Hi everyone, in this video we will be learning about another very amazing STL container called SET. This video is going to be super awesome as this is one of my favorite data structures. So to understand SET, you need to understand its two properties. First, that a SET is a container that stores unique elements. That means the elements will not be repeated in our SET. And second, the elements in our SET are ordered. And by default, they are ordered in ascending order. Let's see how can we initialize a set in our STL. So we write set the data type of the elements that we want to store in our set. It can be integer, character, float, double or any other custom data type. Say int and our identifier of our set. And we can write s dot insert and the element that we want to insert say 5 so this will create a set and will insert 5 into it internally sets are implemented using the red black tree red black trees are balanced binary search trees so all the operations in sets such as insertion deletion or searching are of order big o of log n Let's see the complete implementation of all these operations using our code. To use the set STL container, we need to include the set header file. Here I have already defined my set S which can store integer kind of values. So when I do S dot insert 3, this will insert 3 in my set. Again when I do S dot insert 3, because set contains only unique elements. So this will not insert 3 because 3 is already present in my set. Similarly, 1 will be inserted 5, 2, 4 and again when I will try to insert 5 because 5 is already present. So this will not insert 5. Now let us try to print all the elements of our set and see what is the size of our set. S dot size has given me the number of elements which are present in my set and I have created an iterator to traverse each element of my set and I have printed each element using the dereference operator. Here you can see that each element is unique. The repeated elements are not there and they are present in sorted order and the sorted order is by default ascending order. This is the beauty of the set. Now let us see if we can convert this ascending order sorting into descending order. Here you can see while defining my set I wrote greater int. This parameter has converted my set into a descending order. Now let us see how can we delete elements from our set. The erase function deletes the element which is passed into it from our set. So here after deleting 2 the size of my set became 4 from 5 and now my set is 5431 instead of 54321. Now let us see how can we delete all the elements from our set. This clear function completely empties my set. So now the size is 0 and there is no element present in my set. Now let us see how can we use the find function to find a particular element in our set. I will comment this clear part of the code. Before running this, let us see how find, uh, find function works. The find function takes parameter the element that we want to find. So here it is 4. 
So if this particular element is present in our set, the find function will give me an iterator that will point to that element. And if the element is not present, then this function will give me an iterator that will point to the s dot end, the end of my set, which is the memory location following the last element of my set. So here what I did is I checked if s dot find 4 is not equal to s dot end that means 4 is present so I printed found and if the s dot find 4 is pointing to s dot end that means the element is not present in our set and I printed not found. Now let's try to find 2. As we have erased 2 from our set, so 2 is no more present and my s dot find will be pointing to s dot n. So this has printed not found. Now let's see how can we use the lower bound and upper bound function in our set. To use the lower bound and upper bound function, we need to convert our set into the by default ascending order set. So I have removed this greater parameter. So this lower bound function returns me an iterator that points to the element which is just greater than or equal to my number. That means if this particular number will be present in my set, this will give me an iterator that will point to the number equal to this number. But if this number will, will not be present, then this will give me an iterator that will point to the number which is just greater than my element. So here as 3 was present, so this has given me a iterator that was pointing to 3 and I used the dereference operator to get the value. So the lower bound of 3 is 3 because 3 is present. Now let's see how can we calculate the lower bound of 2. As 2 was not present, so this has given me the number which was just greater than 2 which is 3 in my set. Let's see how upper bound works. This upper bound function returns an iterator that points to the number which is strictly greater than my element. So here in this set the number which is just greater than 3 is 4. So 4 is the upper bound of 3. This is irrespective of whether my element is present or not present in my set. So till now more or less we have implemented all the important operations that we can perform with ordered set. Let's try to recall them. So first of all we inserted the elements in our set. Then we calculated the number of elements that are present in our set. And we also printed all the elements that are there in my set and we saw that each element is unique and they are following a certain order. We also checked how can we delete a particular element from our set and how can we remove all the elements from our set using the clear function. We also experimented with the find function to see how this works to check whether a particular element is present in our set or not. We also calculated the lower bound and upper bound of a number. Let's see another variant of sets called unordered sets. There are two types of sets, ordered and unordered. Ordered are the ones that we just implemented. Both ordered and unordered sets have unique elements. The only major difference is ordering. In ordered sets, they follow a unique order. Either elements are uh, arranged in ascending order or descending order. Whereas in unordered sets, there is no ordering. Elements are placed randomly. Ordered sets are internally implemented using the red black tree and unordered sets are internally implemented using the hash table. Because the ordered sets are implemented using a red black tree which is a binary search tree, so the complexity to insert, search or delete an element is big O of log n. Whereas because unordered sets are implemented using hash table, so the time complexity to insert, search or delete an element can be between big O of 1 and big O of n. But it is important to understand that the average complexity is big O of 1. 
so it is advisable to use unordered sets in competitive programming if if ordering is not required in your use case now let's see how can we implement unordered sets they are very easy and almost similar to ordered sets let's quickly implement them so we'll have to include the unordered set header file and the declaration of our set will be unordered underscore set so this will create a unordered set for us we can insert the elements in the same manner as we did in ordered set and the elements will be inserted by keeping the identity of elements unique similar as we did in the ordered set the size function also works in the similar manner and the iterator can be also created in the same manner just we need to define this iterator on a unordered set now let's try to print our elements of the unordered set so here the size of my uh, unordered set is 5 and the elements are 4 2 5 3 and 1 that means every element is unique the only difference is they are not sorted elements are arranged in random fashion now let's see how the erase function works in unordered set so i'll uncomment this code and now i have deleted two let's see what is the output see here i have deleted two so the size of my set was reduced to four and my elements are now four five three one two was deleted let's see how the clear function works see this also works in the same manner the size of my unordered set is now zero and there is no element in my set the find function also works in the same manner let's try this so here I tried to find 2 but we have removed 2 so it is printing not found and if I will again try to find say 3 so this will give me output as found but here it is important to note that the lower bound and upper bound function cannot be used with unordered set because these functions need our set to be sorted sorted in ascending order and here in unordered set there is no ordering so we cannot use the lower bound and upper bound function so i think after watching this video you will have a very good understanding of ordered and unordered set